What's up, everyone? We are live at 5. It's Thursday, September 12th. We're here at Broadway.com in the heart of Times Square. I'm Paul Montora. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And today's... We have a lot of OBGYNs coming to come through here, don't we? <laughs> a lot of OBGYNs. Uh, because of Waitress. Yeah. Waitress. Yes. Mark Evans. Mark yes. Evans is here, here everyone. Dr. Back. Carr. He's been here before, and he's yeah. back. Uh, we're thrilled to see him back on Broadway. We have a lot to talk about, but first, today's top five. This Tony winner is starring in a very special 50th anniversary production. The Tony winner we're talking about is Ariel Stachel, who of course won the Tony Award for Best Featured Actor in a Musical for The Band's Visit. And he is going to be taking on the title role in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Uh, this That's will really be interesting casting. It, re it really is. I mean, I haven't seen casting. Ariel do that much. But no, it, exactly. It's different from No, it'll also. be, yeah, so it's a 50th anniversary concert staging of it. Uh, it is Manhattan Concert Productions. Uh, it'll be directed by Michael Arden, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll be happening at Lincoln Center's David Geffen Hall on February 17th of 2020 at 8 p.m. Uh, Tony winner Stephen Arenas will be serving as the musical director. Additional casting will be announced at a later date, but um, yeah, this is truly exciting stuff. After Joseph, though, um, Mr. Ariel Stachel will be co-starring in the world premiere musical The Visitor at the Public Theater as well. So Ariel Stachel is super booked and busy. I wonder if Joseph, you know, there's been, obviously there's a new hit production in the West yep. End. And yep. There's, I think there's a lot of talk about maybe that one coming, right? Exactly. I mean, That's I think the one that, yeah. Joseph's coming soon. Yeah. I do think there is going to be, yes, on a, Broadway. New, a, a Joseph right. on Broadway yeah. in, the, in the near future. So who knows yeah. which version? Or, exactly. Or who will, we'll be who will be serving who, Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> who will be twirling in the Technicolor Dream Co. Exactly. I can't wait to find out. <laughs> Mark Evans. Evans his hand. Yeah, excellent. exactly. <laughs> Love it. And this stage icon is coming back to Broadway for one night only. Well, this was a surprise. I yeah. feel like the great Angela Lansbury, just every once in a while, she says, I'd love to do something on stage. That I think my, so. yeah. That was my uh, <laughs> that was person beautiful. a horrible yeah. impersonation. No. And then she just calls someone and yep. they say, well, hey. What would you like to do? Hey, lady, why don't you play Lady <laughs> Bracknell in The Importance of Being Earnest for one night? And she's like, I can commit to that. <laughs> yeah. So that's happening. Five-time yeah. Tony winning stage and screen icon Angela Lansbury will be on Broadway for one night only. Oh, my goodness. That night is November 18th. It starts at 7.30 at the American Airlines Theater. Uh, this is a very, this is obviously a benefit. I mean, People will pay right. big bucks yeah. oh, to yeah, see yeah. a one-night-only Angela money. Lansbury performance. Mm -hmm. It's for the Roundabout Theater Company. Michael Wilson will direct. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he's the one that called her. I don't know. Um, anyway, she's won Tony's for Ready, Mame, yeah. Dear World, Gypsy, Sweeney Todd, Blythe Spirit. My goodness. Yeah. Angela, that's not enough, honestly. And she was also Tony nominated for some other shows because she's been there a lot, even yeah. more. Uh, eight, eight, 15 Emmy nominations? Yes. How many of those were for I mean, Murder, for she, Murder wrote? she Wrote? For Murder, She Wrote, many of them. Yeah, I was going to say. Absolutely. Six Golden Globe Awards, three Oscar nominations, and an honorary oh. Oscar. Anyway, Come on, she's fantastic. We don't know who else will be on stage with her, but that is happening November 18th. So save up your money if you want to go because <laughs> it's not going to be cheap. No. Mm -mm. And this off-Broadway play hasn't even opened yet, and it's already got a one-week extension. We are talking about Anna Devere Smith's uh, new production, Fires in the Mirror. Mm. Uh, this is happening at Off-Broadway's Signature Theater, and as Caitlin mentioned, they've already had a one-week extension. Uh, it will now conclude its run on December 1st at Pershing Square Signature Center. Uh, Shaheem Ali directs the revival. Who's in it? It's a solo Mike, play. Michael Benjamin Washington. Aww. It's just Michael Aww. Benjamin Washington up there owning the stage. Previews for the show begin on October 22nd. It will officially open on November 11th. Um, um, it is based on real events taking place in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, where uh, the real the real life deaths of an American uh, African American boy and a young Orthodox Jewish scholar uh, it affected racial tensions and the tensions in the community. Uh, very important story. Heard it's an incredible production. Very excited to see it. Um, yeah. So now you have an extra week. Hmm. And we found out who's going to be helping rock Madison Square Garden. So is it weird that I get Bad Out of Hell mixed up with We Will Rock You? 
no. I Are the logos doing similar? That too. I, I, there's I mean, just there's like a an energy to both of them that's similar. They're also they're both, like very yeah. British. Like yes, they started over there, mm -hmm. and and they're based on these iconic rock out. Rock. Anyway, it's yeah. it's totally different. It's Queen Meatloaf. But yes. But anyway, we will rock you. So Battle of the Hell's done. Now we will yeah. rock you. Is coming. Yes. Uh, we will rock you. Is on a national tour, and so what's mm -hmm. happening is they're dropping into the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden for one week, November 14th to the 17th. So Angela Lansbury can go because she <laughs> she's, she can go to We Will Rock You and then the day after it closes, she can go do her thing. Yeah, um, Anyway, yeah. Ben Elton wrote the book. It, this, this has played in London for like for 47 so years, yeah. right, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so we now know who will be in it. It's Trevor Cole as Galileo, Carrie Kelly as Scott Amos, Scott Amos. I just love that there's a character named Scott Amos. Uh Crystal Chance as Killer Queen, Elise Irwin as Oz, sorry, I can't say your name, Brian Christensen as Brit, Kyle Gruninger as Kashagi, and Kevin Doe as Buddy. Have you ever auditioned for any of these roles, Mark? Yeah. He has. You okay, have. we'll get to that. Okay. Um, anyway, it's at the Hulu Theater. Check it out. And um, this Tony winning musical has adding one extra performance for its fellow actors. Yes, we are approaching the time of year where a lot of these things happening, these special benefit performances of shows, um, and Ain't Too Proud is going to have the next one. Uh, they have scheduled a special benefit showing uh, to support the Actors Fund, of course. This is happening September 15th at 7.30 p.m. Of course, Ain't Too Proud opened on Broadway on March 21st. It stars Derek Baskin, Ephraim Sykes, Jelani Remy, our Broadway.com blogger, Juwan M. Jackson, and James Harkness. They are our temptations. Um, and of course, Sir Sergio Trujillo took home a Tony Award for his choreography in this show as well. Um, so if you have not seen the show at the Imperial Theater and you'd like to, you know, buy some tickets to help benefit you, the actors. You know fund. what else? Also, if you're ever worried about like seeing um, understudies, go on the Actors Fun Night because they all love to sort of. Yes. I feel like yeah. everyone, you know, yeah. it's a better no, I mean, better yeah. chance of making sure it's you a, see. It's, it's a good shot. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's a great. We love. We the love Ain't Too Proud. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. So much. And fun. the Actors Fun. Absolutely. So it's all one big thing. Yeah, and almost. also, um, great character study. Yes. So oh, we've been doing, we've been doing these weekly uh, yeah. Disney Such theatrical character yeah. study. Yeah. And this week, uh, I, I interviewed and Nick mm -hmm. Chakra shot mm -hmm. and directed Andrew Perosi, who plays Sven. The reindeer. In Frozen. Yeah. And I got to say, it's... it's it's one of the best. It's truly amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, really it's amazing. Cool. Yeah. It's crazy. It's really amazing to see. There, uh, there hasn't ever been does, one like that. Yeah. What he it's, does. It's I mean, incredible. It's, it's, it's pretty sort of, um, it's it's pure Disney magic what yeah. happens well with done. that character. Yes. Yeah. Also, uh, Beth Stevens wrote a preview of Slave, Slave Play. Slave Play, which, which is making now in lots previews. of very buzzy Slave Play. Very Ain't buzzy. Broadway. Yeah, exactly. Buzzy. Yeah, absolutely. I'm dying to see it. <laughs> um, speaking of Ain't Too Proud, episode three of All About That Bass with Juwan M. Jackson is up on the site right now. You can watch that as well. Cool. Mm -hmm. And the summer tour, right? The summer That's... tour, yes. They had a press event yesterday. We've got photos. We've got rehearsal clips. They perform MacArthur Park, Bad Ooh. Girls, and she works hard for the money. Yes, she does. Um, yeah, so I was going to say, oh, the they did good songs, but every song in summer I is mean, good song. I mean, Donna Summer, yeah. I mean, Queen uh, of Disco. Queen of yeah. Disco. We love All that. right. Anyway, thank you so much. Brian. My pleasure. Hey, Caitlin, tell everyone about today's guest. Gladly. Yes, we got Broadway's favorite OBGYN, Mark Evans, here. Well, he's not an OBGYN. He plays Broadway's. I messed that up. But he, Mark Evans is here. He plays Dr. Prometer and Waitress on Broadway. He previously made his Broadway debut in the play That Goes Wrong. But you may know him for his several stage roles in the West End. He was in Spam a Lot, Wicked, Ghost the Musical. He's also appeared in Mary Poppins, Book of Mormon. He can do it all. We're so glad he's here. Follow him on social media at Mark Evans Actor and leave all of your questions in the comments below. Everyone, please welcome Mark and Paul. Thank you, Caitlin. Thanks, Caitlin. Oh, you know, when she says Mark, and my brother's name's Mark, so oh. I feel like Mark and Paul. And we're dressed Paul. kind of the same, so, you know. <laughs> They're brothers. <laughs> Got my memo. How are you? I'm great. Thank uh, you. My, so I was looking at your um, Instagram, which I always do, but I was looking at recently, and you, you I love that you posted uh, when you were starting a waitress, you said, if anyone's pregnant, I've had two weeks of rehearsal, so I'm sure. I'm ready. <laughs> two full weeks of rehearsal. <laughs> two full weeks. I know what I'm doing. Literally in the show, all I'm directing to do is put on some latex gloves and then I take them off and we just you know <laughs> we fill in the, <laughs> fill in the blanks <laughs> between I did it I delivered that baby so how is it going oh, I'm fun? having a great time what a great I was actually looking at the the current cast is a really fun mix of people right it's wonderful and 
Todrick Hall and Colleen Ballinger are in it. Yeah. They're about to finish their run in the show Miranda on, sings. on Sunday. Miranda sings. Uh, they've been in it for four weeks. And, and you've met Miranda too, not just Colleen, correct? Oh, we go way back about 11 years. Um, oh, yeah? I interviewed her when she did her first concert in London and then did she gave me a voice lesson on stage. Oh, how on amazing. YouTube. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, but yeah, they've been in it for four weeks and the show has been at like 100% capacity. The audiences are phenomenal. Um, it's kind of given a real resurgence to to the show, mm -hmm. which is unfortunately closing January 5th, but it feels Yeah, it could keep going. It, it feels, feels like exciting. it could keep going. Yeah. I mean, this show has had such an amazing life yeah. and it's been great to see so many uh, fantastic talents go in there and, and it sort of like insert their own personalities into it. That's and a great thing. I think taking over um, uh, a role in a show that's been in existence for a while is kind of its own art form um, because you are, you know, you have to stand in certain places in order to be lit and it's it's structured in a very specific way but then finding your own authenticity within that is amazing and I personally feel so blessed to have gone in at the same time as Alison Luff who mm -hmm. is starring as Jenna until Sunday. She is one of the best actors I've ever worked with. She's so special. And for us to, I mean, everything that Dr. Pomander does on stage is with Jenna. Yeah. So it's been incredible that we got to discover it together mm -hmm. and create like this, um, this relationship that is really, really special. And we've mm -hmm. we known each other a couple of years, so that okay. kind of helped as well. And if anyone hasn't seen her, check out the clubbroadway.com of her singing uh, She Used to Be Mine because it like totally blew up on social media because she's, am she's amazing. amazing. She's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then Jordan Sparks is coming in. She is indeed. Yes. She opens on Monday. And um, I haven't actually announced this at all. A little exclusive. I'm staying with the show. Yay! Yay! Until October 27th. Fantastic. So I'm going to be playing opposite Jordan as well. Um, they're giving me a little time off for my wedding. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I know. So weeks. so I've been following. You are getting married. <laughs> sure am. Uh, to who, Justin. So who's the lucky guy? Justin Mortalidi. You, you guys have been together for a, a while? Four years. Yeah, okay. Four years. And uh, he feels fancy. like we've been engaged for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's wedding planning, I, I guess. Know. Right? It, we I, said we've been laughing this week, saying like, it just feels like something that we've gotten used to just being a thing that is planned. Like uh -huh. suddenly, two weeks on Monday, it's going to be a thing that is happening. Yeah, <laughs> and it's we're happening. excited. It's happening. So congratulations. Thank you. That's Thanks. exciting. Yeah, it is. Uh, and he's super talented, too. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. We good. actually met um, through my friend Becca Falconbury, and she introduced oh. the two of us. And he was just leaving New York um, to go to do Drew in Rock of Ages in mm -hmm. Vegas, where he opened the show there, and they wanted him to go back um, for four months. Um, so we didn't actually meet in person. And we had basically been FaceTiming and messaging and calling, and I'd fallen in love with him before even meeting him in person. Yeah. Wow, you so, FaceTime fell in love. That's so yeah. sweet. It was amazing. Aww. And then when I flew to Vegas, because I couldn't wait four months, I went after about six weeks, I flew there to meet him. And I was so glad that he was talented. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that would have been the worst. <laughs> so it's like, I already love this guy, and like, I'm really invested in this. If he'd have been terrible in Rock of Ages, it would have been a real disappointment. Because talent is attractive. You, could, you can't fake that he's for, uh, forever. Talented. You wouldn't have been able to, to you know. No. <laughs> I'd have been like, well done. He was so yeah. great in Clueless, too. Yeah. 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 He, he, he's, he's super, super great. So well, congratulations. Thank very, you. I'm very excited. For, are you wearing matching outfits? No, we're wearing cohesive outfits, but cohesive. we're very, very different as <laughs> you know, like in, in style and as people. So it was important that we were different. How awesome. So how long have you been in New York now? Well, I came over to the States to do Book of Mormon tour, right. um, which was about, what are we now? Just over six and a half years ago. Okay. Uh, December 2012. Um, and did that for a year and a half and then moved here. Um, I, I didn't anticipate staying when I came over to do Book of Mormon, but I love it and love New York. And we now live out in Jersey and we have a house and it's all. Yeah, I know. You seem very settled here. I mean, this is home now. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, it's it's being a uh, being embraced by the Broadway community is amazing because, as Caitlin so graciously said, I I've worked quite a lot in the UK, but it was you know I was thirty when I moved here and I was like, oh gosh, I'm kind of starting all over again mm. and having to reintroduce myself. Yeah, and it is it's been wonderful to be embraced by the Broadway community and it's a different work ethic and uh, it's a different approach to the art form and um, it really inspires and motivates me. So I feel very honored to be it a part of like it. It seems like you're doing really well. I mean, it seems like people know I you mean, now. I was you're just saying to Caitlin before coming in here, you know, if you want to feel booked and blessed, 
Plan a wedding, because then people just throw jobs at you to be really inconvenient. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. I'm the associate director of The Play That Goes Wrong, um, which is about to start another national tour. So oh, we go, you still, you are? I'm the associate director oh. of it at New oh, Old Stages. Wow. Oh, okay. And we go into rehearsal for the next tour um, Monday, a uh, week on Monday. So, like, just leading up to the wedding oh and then God. doing Waitress at night, it's... I feel very, very blessed, but it, yeah, it's at the, the least convenient time. Yeah, and you do a lot of readings and workshops and all That's that. That's what I love, just yeah. being yeah. in the room where it happens, you know, mm -hmm. just being a part of something and seeing it in its like bare bones, original form, and then seeing, you know, what, what the potential is to come from there. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, and so, you, and you're, you're really good at American accents too, because you can't... I have to be. I mean, be. it's funny because... Um, a friend of mine came to see the show the other night and she had a 10 year old daughter and she was like, I could still tell you were British. I'm like, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> but the thing is, is that, you know, I, I try and make it sound as authentic as possible because yeah. that's what I'm paid to do. And so sometimes I speak at the same pace that I do, okay. which is quite quick. And sometimes I catch myself, I'm like, well, that wasn't very good, but I'm not gonna go back and do it again. Right. Um, but I'm surrounded by people who, um, <laughs> will pull me up on it. I said to Alison during rehearsal, I was like, if you ever hear anything that I'm doing, like, which is inaccurate, please tell me. And she was like, there's one thing that you keep doing. And you guys pronounce, well, we say, we say marsh, marshmallow. Marshmallow. And, and it's marshmallow. Yeah. So you put the emphasis on the middle. We say marshmallow. No, I'm always going to say it that way. Marshmallow. Yeah. Marshmallow. Yeah. yeah. Marshmallow. I can tell you were British. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> marshmallow. Like, Did you make that marshmallow pie? And she's like, <laughs> no, no, that's no, not I right. didn't. <laughs> you get you get to do a lot of uh, comedy in this too. I mean, it's really it's really fun. The characters kind of how do you describe him? He's a he's little neurotic. He's, he's neurotic. neurotic, and that was one thing during rehearsals where I I just kept getting the adjustment like. You know, he, he, you, can, you can kind of have fun with this a little bit more. And I'm like, I know what you're saying, it's not quite neurotic enough, but it's so important to me that like the, neur the neuroses are grounded in reality. So it's okay. not mm. just, I'd never be the actor that's like, you know, <laughs> whatever that was. See, it we're doesn't gonna work. A, we're going to make a Jeff it on the yeah. <laughs> Not a Jeff, a Jeff. A Jeff. Yeah. Is that what it's pronounced? Jeff. Oh. The guy who invented I it. I say said, Jeff. I'll call it a different thing today. Anyway. <laughs> A no. <laughs> All right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you, you want it to be grounded and say Yeah, and so then it's it's just something that you really flesh stuff out with, with an audience, and the audience let you know what works and what doesn't and kind of gives you permission to kind of go a little bit further. But as long as it is grounded in storytelling, then I feel I have mm -hmm. permission to, mm -hmm. to <laughs> have It's fun. also a sweet love story. <clears throat> oh, it's wonderful. I've been a fan of Waitress. I auditioned for it before it even went to, to Boston. Um, and wondered whether I'd get the chance to, to play the role. And it's so interesting now that I'm in it, a lot of my friends who are coming to see it, they were like, I'd never seen Waitress. And I had an idea of what it was. It is so much more than I anticipated. It's so moving, it's so funny, mm. um, yeah. and they're having a really great time. And I'm, I'm so proud, I'm really proud to be a part of this. It's definitely one of the highlights of my career. They all uh, came to see it finally because Miranda Sings is in it or because you're in it? <laughs> <laughs> Todrick. Let's, yeah. let's go with Todrick. <laughs> I first uh, discovered you because you were in I Loved Ghost, the musical, and you did it in London. And yeah. you were in the, you did like a music video. I remember that first, right? Yeah. I remember finding you like on YouTube. That's yes. I, yeah. Siobhan yeah. Dillon and I did a cover of Gautier's um, right. Somebody That You Used to <laughs> Right, that I right, used right, to right, 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 totally. Which is a complete different sentiment to what Ghost is about. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we shot this random video and it got a lot of traction. <laughs> yeah. So which uh, character did you audition for? Scaramouche or? Uh, no, because she's female. Um, okay. Galileo. Galileo, Gal oh, another and one. And I actually, this is an interesting story and something that there's a long, I'm sure there's a lot of young aspiring performers out you. there yeah. who um, are watching this. I went into audition and um, the casting director said to my agent, he's gonna get a call back, but he just needs to walk in like he's a leading man. And I hadn't played a leading role hmm. at this point. I'd done ensemble in some West End shows. And I was like, well, what is what is that? You need to mm. give me that. I'm not I'm supposed to walk in like this or something. <laughs> and it's so interesting that like another Jeff. You need <laughs> welcome whoever Jeff is. Um, and like you you 
you can't really know what a, a leading man walks like until right. you actually are. And it's just, oh. it's a confidence uh -huh. thing. And what I wanted and what I needed was someone to just give me an opportunity and then I would learn. You know, mm. you got, it's, I think it's so important. I do a lot of work to promote youth theater and I think it's so important to get a good training. Mm -hmm. But so much of what you learn is on the job. I'm still learning. I mean, working opposite Alison Luff is an acting class every night. It's wonderful. Um, and I just think, that I'm so glad my first leading role was Troy Bolton in High School Musical in London. Mm. And I learned so much doing that, not just how to have the stamina and how to invest in the story, but also how to lead a company. Um, and you mm -hmm. don't know that until you've actually had the experience. Right. Well, that's one of the nice things about maybe coming to America is that you have all that experience, yeah. but none of the baggage yeah. of your career. You know what I mean? You were well, it's nice able to, to be able to, to introduce myself in, in the way that I want to be introduced. And I have wonderful reps that like we, they really allow me to be selective with what I'm considered for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do, do I want to be a part of this? Is this kind of how I see myself? No, and they're all about like longevity and tr like a long trajectory as opposed to like, make that money now. I right, mean, right. Um, so yeah, it's it's awesome. Awesome. Hey, Caitlin, what are the people yes. online saying? Yes, indeedy. Okay, so Mark wants, his name is Mark. He's, I just he's realized. He's a great Mark's. guy. <laughs> Mark wants to know, again, he just would love for you to talk a little bit more about your relationship with Alison Luff and getting to, he said he saw the show and it just was so good seeing you guys on stage together. I mean, I'm going to make sure that Alison watches this because it's probably the most compliment <laughs> she's ever going to get from anyone. Um, <clears throat> it's really, really special. Um, we... <laughs> before the show every night if I don't have time to go up because we're on separate sides of the building the right. opposite sides of stage if I don't get a chance to go see her we FaceTime from one, to, oh from one God, dressing room to the that. other um, <laughs> we just have this wonderful wonderful connection and I've known her for a couple of years because she did Escape to Margaritaville with Justin my fiance oh, right, um, right. <clears throat> and so I found I saw the announcement went out about her going in as Jenna, and I text Justin, I was like, have you seen this? And I text Alison saying, I am so excited that you are gonna have the opportunity to play this role, and that for people to see you do this, I can't wait to buy a ticket to see you do it. And the next day I got the offer that I was gonna be starring oh God, opposite her. Amazing. And from then we've kind of had this kind of exciting buzz and a real curiosity as to who these people are. We got in a studio, just the two of us bef during rehearsals, just to talk about the past life, like the, not the past lives, but like the the history of like mm. how Jenna grew up, how James Pomeroy grew up, and shared all of that. So then we ha actually have a lot more information to draw from. Cool. It's exciting and new every night, and I adore her. I that know. enough? You're welcome, Alice. Sounds Alison. like, <laughs> like all the cameras you, are changing. I'm can like you talking think of to any, her. Can uh, other shows you'd like to do with her? It's so funny because she was um, Casey Levy's understudy in Ghost, um, right. oh. and she, I'm Wait, sure she, she was, was? From, yes in London. No, here. Oh, when for Broadway. Ca when Casey okay, came, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and we were saying we'd like to do I that. I didn't realize that, Alison. Yeah. Um, I would love to. I would love to work with her. She. she Does that was, mean you want to do Ghost? I don't know that it would come back after, I, after look, the. You can do it. You can do it here. I, I would sit. We'll do Ghost it on course in twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would love to do the Greatest Showman with her. She was a part of the reading, um, and oh. I want to be. P.T. Barnum. Yes. So I'm just putting that out there. No, 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 no. I, I'm glad this is, I've been putting out that this needs to Surely, I mean, surely stage. it's going to happen at some point. Yeah, you know, I wonder. Uh, yes, you're right. Of course it Paul will. Paul Antorik is going to produce it. You heard it here first. I'm going to star in it with Alison. Okay. There you go. All right. I'm so, do you, do you know how much I listen to that soundtrack? It's actually kind of sick. <laughs> it's, it's kind of sick. But no, I could totally picture you doing that. I'm into it. Okay. okay. All right. All right. It. Okay. Love Put it. it out there. Maisie wants to know what food do you miss from the UK? Oh, I get back, honestly, this is a lame answer. I get back there often enough to get my fix of everything. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm marrying an Italian American who has, oh, I'm gonna finish that sentence, who has great meatballs and gravy. Great meatballs. Great meatballs. And he's really good in, in the kitchen. So um, I get my British fix when I get home and then I just embrace American food while I'm over here. All right, that's so fine. The answer is nothing. The um, is nothing. <laughs> Marks and Spencer's food in general. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. All right, there it is. Maggie wants to know what have you learned about pies, and have you baked? Have mm. you been baking pies more since doing the show, or not more? I used to bake with my mom when I was growing up. Um, when I was in rehearsal for this show, I just started the Whole Thirty diet, which is basically mm. no sugar, no right. f anything, no fun. Um, and so I was the the food that I actually have to eat on stage, I had baked myself. So up until last week, when I realized I was going to be extending in the show, and I was like, I ain't got time to bake my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. 
<laughs> Beep. Um, and so I was eating my own stuff, and it tasted like cardboard. And last week when I had a blueberry muffin for the first time, it was the most authentic response. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome back to the living. Yeah. And you're going to eat at your wedding. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm off the diet now. Okay. But it's like, right. just, yeah. sure. <laughs> sure. Amazing. And we can, do, we can do one more question. And Danny wants to know, what is the biggest difference that you have noticed as being like Broadway versus West End, if any? The first thing that comes to mind is the salary. West End actors are severely underpaid. Mm -hmm. um, they work very, very, very hard, just as hard as Broadway, and they deserve to get compensated in the way that Broadway performers do. But there's, there's so many things. Um, uh, just, you know, I was sitting in here and just seeing like what, like how much of a thing Broadway is yeah. all across the country, how the Tony Awards are celebrated across. It's just, it feels nothing against the West End, but it feels more celebrated and more prestigious. And it feels like there's almost more mm -hmm. pride to be a part of, of the Broadway community. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I'm glad you are. Oh, me too. I'm glad it's working out for me you. Too. Well, every, okay, so you're now in Waitress through October... 27th. 27th. Yes. And then a crazy, are you a Halloween person? I am by default of my soon-to-be husband. Because oh. <laughs> he really is a crazy Halloween like person. Like really into it? Yeah. Okay. Everyone's just going to be Miranda Sings this Halloween. No, I, I will be. I'm just going <laughs> to steal a lipstick from her dressing room before she leaves on the weekend. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank I hope you, you have an amazing wedding. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank uh, next time we see you, you'll be a married man. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could see him over at the Waitress, the yeah. Brooks Theater, through October 27th. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Paul. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Ain't Too Proud's Jelani Remy.